Hi guys. Um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. And this is my, me. And um, today I thought I'd do a little video on um, palpitations and indicators of higher risk or which palpitations or what features suggest that your palpitations could be dangerous. Now, the first thing to say is that any condition can do one of two things or both. Okay. It can affect your quality of life, i.e. it can cause symptoms. And secondly, it can affect your length of life, i.e. it can affect your lifespan or prognosis. So it can make you feel unwell and it can, um, you know, shorten your life, your length of life. These are two separate things. And it's really important to bear that in mind. Not everything that makes you feel hideous is going to shorten your lifespan. And there are other things which you may not even know about which can shorten your lifespan. So a typical example is migraine, for example. Migraine is horrible. You know, it can cause incredible discomfort for people. It affects their quality of life in a terrible way. But generally, people live a normal lifespan. Whereas a brain tumor can be completely silent and may not necessarily affect a person in terms of symptoms, but can certainly shorten the lifespan. So when people get palpitations, the um, obvious feeling is, oh my God, I'm having palpitation. They make me feel unwell. Am I going to die? Okay. And the number of people I've had saying, oh, well, I'm having these palpitations. And my biggest anxiety is that I may have a heart attack or my heart may just stop. Uh, and so I, I often say to them that, look, you know, the first thing is just because you feel awful doesn't necessarily mean that these are going to shorten your lifespan. The second thing to understand is that people uh, often worry about heart attacks with palpitations. In general, palpitations don't cause heart attacks. The, uh, heart attacks are a plumbing issue with the heart. Palpitations are an electrical issue with the heart. Now, sure, if you have dodgy plumbing, and the electrics become a bit faulty, then yes, you can cause a heart attack, but that is usually something that happens in very old people or people who have bad heart artery narrowings, okay? Young people, uh, otherwise healthy people, it's very unlikely that the palpitations will cause a heart attack. So I don't think you need to be too worried about having a heart attack with your palpitation, okay? Um, what is, more relevant and more likely is that if palpitations can cause the heart to stop, i.e. can cause sudden death. Um, and whereas the majority of palpitations that we see are benign and don't cause sudden death, there are certain features that we always think about uh, when we're worried about uh, this question. You know, what are the things that make me worry about sudden death? And that's what I wanted to discuss today. I wanted to uh, lay across a few features that I would be, uh, that would concern me if someone came and spoke to me about palpitations. So the first feature that I think is really, really important to highlight and certainly indicates the need to get che getting checked out. You know, if you have this, you need to get checked out. And truthfully, if you have this, and even if you don't get palpitations, you need to get checked out. And that is a family history of premature sudden death, okay? So in a, in a young person in your family, be that your first degree relative or a cousin or anyone, if someone has dropped down dead uh, at a young age without explanation, then you need to get checked out regardless of whether you have palpitations or not. But if you have palpitations, then you certainly need to get checked out. Why? Because sometimes you can inherit a similar gene and the palpitations may um, be a, a, a marker of something brewing. Um, so when I say, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, my, my aunt died at the age of 80 with a heart attack. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is if you have a cousin who was playing football at the age of 13 and suddenly dropped down dead. If you have um, a, a uh, a great uncle who, you know, at the age of 35, suddenly dropped down dead. That uh, is a real worry. Or even if someone had a cardiac arrest but was successfully resuscitated from it, then that is again a worry. Anyone who may have had a cardiac arrest 
uh, at a young age, by young I say less than the age of 50, where um, the diagnosis was not an obvious heart attack, but you know, sudden death for some unknown reason, you need to get checked out. The other thing it's worth getting checked out is if you have a family history of people requiring pacemakers at a young age. Now, pacemakers are very common in older people. So I don't think that you need to worry about if an 80-year-old aunt had a pacemaker. But if you have a 13-year-old cousin who's had to have a pacemaker, or if you've had a 20-year-old cousin or uncle who had a pacemaker, that you know, you just want to get checked out um, by a cardiologist to just to be sure that you haven't inherited anything. Another thing that's worth bearing in mind is if there's a family history of things like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, okay, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or muscular dystrophy, um, uh, then it's always worth getting checked out. Okay, so if if I had a patient who came in with palpitations and said to me. I have an uncle um, who dropped down dead suddenly at the age of 15. That would worry me. That would worry me. And I would be very, very particular about making sure that they went through a very rigorous check to ensure that they haven't inherited some kind of gene which could expose them to sudden death. So family history is really important. And it's always good that if you're going to go and see your doctor, or a cardiologist that you have, do a little bit of research about your family history and know exactly you know, if there is any such history in your family. Number two, okay, number two, if there is a history of blackouts with your palpitations, then that is again an important and possibly a high risk feature. Okay, if your palpitations are associated with blackouts, it's very important to understand what I mean by a blackout. A blackout is almost like a light switch turning off, everything going black and the patient falling to the floor. And often it results in an injury. Some people mistake collapses for blackouts. In a collapse, the person gets enough warning, they lie down, they slump, they feel faint, they usually don't sustain an injury. But with a blackout, it usually results in an injury. So if you have had palpitations associated with blackouts, then clearly it's dangerous because if you're blacking out, then that tells you that there's a significant compromise to the blood around the body and therefore the blood's not getting to the brain. But secondly, as you black out, you could sustain a significant injury and you could sustain that even perhaps when you're driving, for example, in which case you risk other people's lives. So that's really important. The third thing I'd say is blackouts whilst exercising regardless of whether you get palpitations or not if you are blacking out when exercising even if you've had one blackout during exercise it's well worth going and getting checked out as soon as possible and your gp or your doctor will need to refer you to a cardiologist and at least have a heart scan and an ecg and probably more monitoring just to ensure that that does not signify a heart, uh, a dangerous heart rhythm. Anything that causes such a significant reduction in output from the heart that it doesn't get to the brain and the patient blacks out is potentially very dangerous, well worth looking into. The fourth thing is to say that if you have evidence of structural heart disease and you get palpitations, now I keep going on about this, if you were born with congenital heart disease, if you have uh, had a heart attack at a relatively young age, if you have heart failure, if you have cardiomyopathy, it's well worth getting checked out because, again, in that setting, palpitations can be dangerous. So those are the four high-risk features um, uh, that, that really worry me. I see a ton of people who have palpitations. Some of them have heart rhythm disturbances, but nothing worries me more than coming across people with one of these four features. Um, and particularly the family history is really, really important. Um, and um, and um, I suppose that's about it. I think, um, I think it's also worth saying that if you get palpitations, it's always a good idea to have at least a resting ECG. Now the resting ECG will not necessarily tell you why you're getting the palpitations. But the resting ECG can be very useful because if it is abnormal, it can indicate, sometimes it can indicate electrical problems within the heart. Some of these are inherited electrical issues, which can sometimes predispose to very fast and dangerous rhythms. Things like long QT syndrome, um, Brugada syndrome, Wolf-Parkinson-White. 
these can all sometimes these can usually be picked up on just a resting 12 lead ECG. So if you have a normal 12 lead ECG, that is very reassuring. If you have an abnormal 12 lead ECG, undoubtedly in the setting of palpitations, that needs to be investigated further. Um, and that's about it. That's all I wanted to say for this. Um, as again, once again, I hope that you found this useful. Um, my name's Sanjay Gupta. Here you go. Okay. Now, I did have a Facebook page, but now Facebook have changed their real name policy, and so uh, I'm hoping that they'll let me keep my York Cardiology Facebook page, otherwise I'm going to have to make a new page. Uh, but in the interim, you can certainly get through to me on my website, or you can ring my secretary, uh, Jeanette, on 0190-472-5811. I also have Twitter, but I don't really go on it. But the, my website's the best way to get in touch with me. All right. Well, I wish you all um, a happy Sunday, and I look forward to coming back and chatting to you more in the near future. Take care. Bye.